Thanks so much. Uh, excellent. So I've kind of uh, distilled down how to make a good video into seven steps, and I hope that uh, you find this helpful. Um, and when John was talking about how hard it is to get a video accepted in a Sages, he's not kidding. We can really only have room for about one out of ten videos that get submitted, so there's about a 10% acceptance rate. We're hoping for upcoming meetings there are going to be more slots for videos, so we'll be able to, to show some more videos. When I was asked to do this, the first thing I did is I went back to one of the first talks I gave uh, about making videos at Sages, which was the Surgeon in the Digital Age course that we put on about 10 years ago. And going back to that time, things were a lot different. Um, this was state of the art over here. You've got a, a, a VHS uh, uh, video recorder here. If you can remember tapes, uh, that, if that makes you as old as I am or, or worse. Um, and the fancy new thing back then was mini DV tape. If you had digital tape recording, that was about as fancy as you could get. And that was really the high end of, of making surgical videos back in 2004. When we put on the course, we had to talk about all kinds of things like oh, the different way you're going to use RCA cables or BNC connectors or RGB cables and, and how did you connect them to all those you know, wacky you know, connector uh, things on the back of the TV. And there was all these, uh, all these mechanical things that you had to address. All that is moot now because you're probably working with a system like this where you have digital capture. You can just press a button and your video gets stored onto a digital format and all you have to do is find a place, uh, a way to get your information from this digital capture device back to your computer. And generally you're going to use either an SD card or a, a USB uh, key or something like that to, to transfer the data. And again, going back 10 years, your video editing computer was probably some big expensive workstation with lots of memory and lots of hard disk space. And you don't need that anymore. You can pretty much do all your video editing on on any reasonable laptop or desktop computer. In terms of which editing software you should use, um, there's so many out there and they're all relatively good for the basic kind of editing that you're going to need for a surgical video. Uh, I think it, 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 you don't need to get into particular brand names. What, what I personally use is an Adobe product called Photoshop uh, or uh, um, uh, Premiere, excuse me, Premiere Elements, which is a very cheap, it's under 100 bucks, uh, and there are many other similar programs out there that allow you to import all your clips, lay them out, and then uh, add transitions. And you can do fancy things like put in graphics if you need to. So it doesn't really matter which editor you use. There are a lot of them out there. You don't need to go with the professional quality program that's going to cost $500. You can go with a very basic one uh, that's well under $100. So first key step, you got to start with good material. If you, you know, it's the, the old philosophy of garbage in, garbage out. You got to start with high quality material so you end up with good material. So the first thing you need is a good topic. Uh, you don't want to just start the cameras rolling on your last TEP inguinal hernia. People have seen that. It may not be particularly interesting. But if it's more interesting than that, suppose it's a complication. Suppose it's an inguinal hernia where you accidentally lacerate the iliac vein. That becomes a lot more interesting. Uh, not necessarily good, but more interesting. Um, suppose you explain how to do that TEP inguinal hernia repair using amazing 3D graphics that one, of, that one of your colleagues puts together or you put together, and it really explains it in a really clear, easy to understand way that makes it great for residents and fellows and, and uh, other surgeons who haven't done the operation before. Then it takes a, a common topic and makes it unique and more interesting. Or suppose it's a bit of special knowledge. Suppose you've done 3,000 TEPs and you know some tricks which are not commonly known and you're going to uh, take all those technical tips and pearls and put them into a surgical video. Then it takes an ordinary operation and makes it interesting. Tip number two, make sure you set your recording settings right. Usually with these digital recorders, you have a bunch of different options. You can set it to low resolution, medium, high resolution. Some people will keep that routinely set on the low resolution so that there's more storage capacity on the device. But that's not what you want for a video that you're going to submit to Sages or another surgical organization. You want to choose the highest settings possible. Uh, and it's going to give you a big file that's going to take a while to transfer. But it's going to give you a much better picture. So choose the highest setting you can, the highest resolution. And you're going to need a big USB key to transfer it from the capture device to your computer. But they're cheap, so get a 32 or a 64 gigabyte USB key. They're not that expensive, and that allows you to transfer 
the data pretty easily. Point number three, you need to get clean images. Um, and this seems pretty obvious, but it's amazing how many videos get submitted to SAGES and other surgical organizations where there's a big glob of blood on the side of the lens, and that's not going to get accepted. So even if you normally use a five millimeter scope and maybe you get a great image, if you're going to make a video specifically for submission to SAGES, you might want to use a 10 millimeter scope. It's going to be brighter, it's going to be less susceptible to getting smeared with a little piece of fat or blood, um, and it's going to give you generally a better image. Make sure it's focused. Make sure the tip stays clean. And if the tip gets dirty, take it out and clean it. It's going to slow down your operation. But that doesn't matter if your goal is just to get a really clean image for the video. And also, tell the person who's holding your camera that this is a special video. This is not just a regular video recording, but this is something you're hoping to submit to SAGES or another surgical organization. And hopefully that will uh, incentivize them to, to do a better job in making sure that the image is held steady and uh, is clean and focused. Number four, record the whole case. A lot of people go in with the attitude, no, oh, when it gets interesting, I'll start, I'll press the record button. But when you do that, you never know when it's going to get interesting. Sometimes it gets interesting, for better or worse, a lot sooner than you're expecting. Sometimes it doesn't get more interesting, and sometimes you forget that you didn't press the recording button. Next thing you know, you finish the case and you say, that was great, and you realize that you haven't recorded any of it. So just start the record button. Again, you're not using up videotape. It, uh, there's no expense involved in recording it. If you end up with images that you don't like, you can just delete it and start again the next time. So record the whole case. Um, if there's going to be a big pause, like let's say you're doing a lap coli and you're doing a cholangiogram, and there's going to be a 15-minute break while you do the cholangiogram, uh, or longer in some places, hopefully shorter in your hospital. Uh, but you can stop the recording then, so you don't just have a 15-minute uh, spot in your video where you're just looking at a, a blank screen. Um, if you do have other video sources, so if you are doing a cholangiogram, if you're doing an upper endoscopy, see if there's a way that you can cleanly capture that video. So we do see some videos that get uh, submitted where someone's holding their iPhone up in front of the flexible endoscope screen so that they can capture those images. And that's certainly better than not capturing the images at all. But if you can just connect a cable up to the video output on the back of your flexible endo endoscopy cart, that's going to give you a much better video signal. So try and get clean video capture from your flexible endoscope or your uh, fluoroscope. Number five, once you have the raw data, you have to edit aggressively. Um, surgeons usually love the way they operate, and they love watching themselves operate. And so when you're watching a video of your own operation, it's just fun to watch how you're sewing and fun to watch how you're dissecting. Uh, but it may not be fun for the other 200 people in the room. So edit, edit, edit. Cut, cut, cut. Longer isn't better. You want to just show the key parts of the operation, and you want to distill it to its essence. You want to get rid of all the unnecessary dissection. Once you've shown five seconds of lysis of adhesion, uh, it may just seem like five seconds to you, but it seems like 30 minutes to everyone else in the room. So get through the boring parts quickly so you can get to the interesting parts of the operation. The more you cut, the better. And uh, just because we say that videos can be up to 10 minutes doesn't mean that they have to be exactly 10 minutes. It's fine. In fact, it's probably better if they're six or seven or eight minutes so long as you get to all the important points during those six minutes. Now, this is an important one, and this is a rule which gets broken all the time. Do not distract the viewer. Yes, we know that you, you know, you spent your money on a nice video editor software, and we know that you can have fancy transitions where things spin around and fly in pinwheels and do this and that, but that's not right for a surgical video. You don't want any background music. So, uh, particularly Vivaldi. How many times do I, we get Vivaldi on, on surgical videos? I don't know why that is. No background music, please. No fancy transitions. And usually the best transition is just either a direct cut or a, a, a gradual dissolve from one to the next. Um, when you have word slides on your video, use simple, short word slides. Complicated, long sentences don't work well on PowerPoint, and they don't work well on a video. And also, take advantage of the tools that you have to direct the viewer's attention. So when you're looking at the screen and you can clearly see the right cruise and the left cruise, don't assume that the viewer understands the anatomy as well as you do. 
So you might want to put an arrow or a circle, and it's very easy with these software packages to superimpose an arrow or a circle where you need it. And number seven, have a satisfying conclusion. So if you're showing uh, a case report of an interesting patient, don't just finish the case and say, we finished the case and it took 63 minutes, but give some outcomes. How long was the patient in the hospital? When did you see them in follow-up? Can you take a picture of the trocar sites to show exactly where they were when the patient came back in for follow-up and how they healed? And what was the outcome? What was the pathology report? Uh, what were the follow-up x-ray studies? Um, if you don't have long-term follow-up for the patient, at least you can summarize what are the teaching points. What we learned from this video is A, B, C. So instead of just finishing the case and then fading to black, have some type of summary or some type of follow-up so that the, the audience leaves the room with some kind of take-home message. So I hope I can have a satisfying conclusion to this talk. Uh, just to summarize what we talked about, seven points which I think can really help you to get your video accepted. Number one, choose a good topic. Number two, set the equipment settings correctly so you get the best possible image. Number three, tell your camera person that this is going to be for sages so you'll get the best possible picture. Record the whole case, edit aggressively, eliminate all distractions, and of course have a satisfying conclusion. And with that, I uh, hope to satisfyingly conclude. Thank you.